Hello everybody, welcome back to a, another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. In today's video, we are going to be doing a fully stock recreation of the NASA Space Shuttle. And no DLCs are required, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we're uh, going to be doing a little bit of a walkthrough on how to build a space shuttle. You guys seem to like uh, the previous tutorial where I did a uh, Starship tutorial, so I decided let's do another one. And this time we're going to do it of the... Uh, of the space shuttle so we're going to uh, start in the space plane hangar then go into the vab and we're going to instruct the whole thing so we're starting with the orbiter then we're going to do the uh, the orange tank the SRBs and then we're going to at the last few minutes of this video we're going to take it out uh for a little bit of a flight because i want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, like the landing and the takeoff because uh, or the launch rather because some of that stuff can get a little bit tricky so um to start out we have put a mark three a cockpit and we put a um put a uh, uh, Mark III cargo bay, the big one, and then we put a monoprop thing behind it, then the engine adapter, and then we're going to be putting on our three vector main engines. So the first one, we, we do a one-time symmetry up top, and then we do a two-times radial symmetry, you know, the one that I'm in right now, like the little squares in the bottom left, like, so I forget what that's called. But yeah, so we're going to put the engines, we're going to leave them pointing straight uh, forward right now. We are going to have to angle them uh, later on, but we don't have the rest of the uh, the uh, stack finished, so we we don't actually know you know how much to angle them so we're gonna leave them like that for now and then we'll change them in a bit now we're going to be putting the wings on another note about the wings is they are obviously the real space shuttle wings are actually quite low down uh, to the vehicle the reason I'm um, uh, building them at this height is because that's where they snapped to um, and I will be uh, I'll be lowering them once we have the wing finished so the wing we're going to do one big S Elevon 2 and then one big S Elevon 1 uh, just mounted on the uh, on the edge of the wing like so and I just want to rotate that to the correct orientation that is going to be uh, uh, the uh, the space shuttle uh, control surfaces and these I'm pretty sure the, this uh, big S Delta wing and the big S uh, all the big S parts I believe are all uh, space shuttle specific parts like they're they're supposed to be space shuttle parts or wings and stuff so there you go just lowering it on down and then uh, after that to uh, finish up the wing we're going to put that wing strike there uh, which is just accurate to the space shuttle because they have a little bit one of those on the real orbiter and then you want to match up you can see that little gray spot on the uh, on the wing there or on the uh, strike which uh, just has been covered up now a few seconds ago that is what you want to line up to the beginning of the biggest wing so you don't see any gray that's why I believe that is there's a little bit of a visual aid so uh, just auto starting that up make sure you don't have any fuel uh, in the wings because um, it's just liquid fuel and that is uh, rather useless. Uh, next thing to add is our um, our very very big big S tail fin. Uh, I've it feels a little bit too big to me, so what I do is actually I lower it into the surface of the uh, of the of the uh, orbiter just a little bit, just to make its proportions a little bit uh, more realistic. But if you don't want to do that, uh, yeah, you don't have to. Obviously, it's just a personal preference thing. And then remember to auto strut stuff. If you don't know how to auto strut and rigid attach, you want to go to uh, settings and then turn on advanced tweakables. Uh, what that does is allow you to auto strut. And what auto strut basically does it has, if you don't know, it has like internal struts, so you don't so the stuff is more uh, attached better. Um, it doesn't flop around and rigid attachment all that does is make stuff not like i guess floppy or not it makes it attached rigidly so it can't like wobble around um that can be useful in some situations and not useful in others like with fairings if you have a fairing rigid attached um the rigid attachment means it has no like leeway to kind of sway or whatever which means they will just basically snap off every time um uh right now uh we are building the landing gear um <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, normally the space shuttle landing gear um, do not have that many wheels, but the if you use the smaller landing gear with the accurate number of wheels, it is just way too small. So we're gonna uh, just use a slightly bigger landing uh, gear for that reason. Do a little bit of a cross fade now, and we are going to build perhaps uh, the most difficult part to get looking right for the space shuttle, uh, and that is the uh, orbital maneuvering system uh, or the OMSs. Um, these are uh, small monoprop engines that are mounted to the back of the space shuttle in these little mounts here. Um, and the mounts are the difficult part, in my opinion. Um, it take it, it depends on what you'd like for your design. What I did is I just did a Mark II adapter thing, and then I put um, an, a nose cone on the side and put it into the space shuttle like that. This design has um, it has some uh, good, good features. I feel like it looks good if you're looking at the head-on, but the uh, downside is that uh, the the area to put the uh, engine on is quite a bit bigger than the real one. Uh, usually the OMS engine is kind of, it's pretty, it's fit pretty snugly in the uh, in the pod, but there's a lot of extra room in the back. 
Um, so it's just up to you what system you like. If you're going to be copy, if you're following along the tutorial, um, this will be the system that I used or the thing I did to make it look uh, the best. And uh, the um, the OMS engines are actually another um, topic of a or to d a debate between I guess me and stuff because uh, I'm using the Puff Monoprop engines, which are actually supposed to be the uh, uh, Space Shuttle's OMS engines. Um, if you don't know what the OMS engines are, what they are is the orbital maneuvering, like I said. It's what the Space Shuttle uses to maneuver in orbit. They are monopropellant engines, so they use RCS. Um, or the RRCS engines in KSP. And what they do is they they just they fire the, they help the shuttle like get into orbit and do orbital maneuvering and rendezvous and stuff with the space station if need be, um, and they they are monoprop engines like I said, um, and so is the the puff is the only monoprop like engine per se like the you know so and that that's it, it looks like the space shuttle engine too but it is a little bit small, and uh, also a quick side note don't forget to angle the OMS engines a little bit downward. Um, just because you want them, you want them to fire toward, uh, into the center of mass. Because uh, if not, then your space shuttle will just uh, all it'll do is it'll it'll flip them, flip the shuttle over, and then you won't actually be able to use them because uh, it'll flip the shuttle over. So yeah, I feel like they're a little bit small. In Matt Lowndes, um space shuttle video, he uh, he used uh, Terrier engines for the OMS engine. So it's really his uh, personal preference. I I used. Oh, message just because they are uh, this accurate to the real thing. Now we're just putting some RCS on. We have these small ones. These are accurate to the real space shuttle where they are. Um, the uh, real space shuttle, I don't believe, has um, those like four-way RCS things. But I'm just going to be putting them on um, in a second just because it, uh, it's just easier for uh, to do dockings and stuff with them. Uh, the RCS setup is not completely accurate. Uh, the real space shuttle also has RCS in like the nose area. Like just below the windshield where the astronauts sit. Um, the reason I didn't do that is because it looks ugly. <laughs> um, so yeah, another a crossfade, and our, um, as you can see, um, the way we kind of clip some of those parts together uh, in the uh, cargo bay, uh, they kind of it kind of looks kind of weird. So what I did is I just put some batteries and reaction wheels to kind of just cover up not not really cover up, but make that part of the cargo bay kind of unusable for cargo. So I guess if you're just kind of doing a little bit of uh, imagining things. Um, you just to say like, oh, that's like the internal, I don't know, space shuttle systems type of a part of the, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, um, that is uh, basically the, the uh, orbiter complete. Um, yeah, so now it's going to be time to move on to the, um, move on to the uh, orange tank. See, I know what I'm talking about, the orange tank um, and the SRB. So when we do that, I would like to, oh my gosh, guys, do my plugs very quick. So don't forget to hit the subscribe today. Yesterday, guys, by the way, uh, if you're watching the time release, I got like 120 subs, I believe it was. That was like, a, I like doubled our, the previous record for amount of subs. So thank you very much for everyone who subbed. I have a goal to hit 2,000 subs by the end of the year, and it is looking slightly probable now. So uh, yeah, thank you guys very much, everyone who subbed, and everyone joined the Discord. I've been doing streams lately and the, the subs and it's just crazy guys so thanks uh yeah hope you uh hope you enjoy the channel if you don't even want to sub you know and like the video passive and aggressive or, i don't know uh i don't know i'm bad at some pumped bad at plugs enough plugs you guys are here for the oh my gosh show my discord just kidding just kidding we actually just had 400 members the other uh, today actually so that's pretty cool um orange tank right so we put a uh, a decoupler on this uh, the shuttle and then we do uh, we, those uh 3.75 meter uh, fuel tanks, and then we want to recolor them orange, obviously, to match the space shuttle. You can use 5 meter fuel tanks if you have the Making History DLC. Um, they are slightly more accurate to the actual size of the space shuttle, um, and uh, uh, but they uh, they can't be colored orange, and uh, the re that's one reason I didn't use them. The other reason is they're a DLC part, and uh, it'd just be easier to keep this thing non-DLC just for uh, people who don't use DLC, because uh, the rest of the shuttle doesn't need DLC, so it'd be kind of weird to just use a DLC um, <laughs> all of a sudden, because, I mean, it's already non-DLC. Might as well make it non-DLC. I'm just saying DLC like 35 times. Either way. Um, now for the bottom of the orange tank. Uh, if you look at a real picture of the space shuttle, the orange tank is very kind of like flat on the bottom. So um, I decided not to use a nose cone, and I decided to just use a fairing uh, to uh, to make my uh, the bottom of the orange tank. It's not complete. It doesn't look completely right um, because the fairing, um, even though I turned snapping off, the fairing is a little bit... Um, Edgy? That's not the right word. I don't know. Slanty, pointy. I don't know. What the, I really don't know what the word is. And the color isn't exactly accurate. It has like those uh, like darker brown bits there on it. But hey, it's good enough. So that is the orange tank. Now it is time to um, 
to uh, put some more decouplers on the side of the orange tank and then we can put our two Clydesdale SRVs on and uh, these Clydesdales are I believe uh, supposed to replicate the space shuttle um, SRVs so that is pretty cool and then once you put the Clydesdales on now I think it's time to uh, we can uh, move on over to uh, the vehicle assembly building and we can point the thing vertically because uh, we're getting almost done uh, with our construction of the vehicle um, if uh, you want to do a, a good um, if you want a good indicator if your orange tank is long enough or too long or a good length, you want your orange tank to be roughly about as long uh, as a Clydesdale, maybe slightly shorter if uh, you include the nose cone on the Clydesdale. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a good, because that's about the realistic proportions uh, for the real space shuttle. So there are our SRBs attached with a nose cone attached to it. And uh, one thing that is very important for the SRBs is you want to make sure you put sepatrons on them and a lot of sepatrons. You can put them basically wherever you want at the top or the bottom or both. Um, I put like four on each top or actually eight on each top because of symmetry, right? Um, I just did that because I like when the boosters kind of jet out from the top and kind of spin around like on the Soyuz. Um, it's called the Korolev Cross, by the way. Uh, the Soyuz one, fun fact. Um, it just looks cool. So that's right. You can do whatever way you want. Um, so it's up to you. Um, because if you don't do that, uh, they will likely smash into the wings of the uh, of the space shuttle when uh, when you do uh, when you separate the uh, SRBs. And another thing you want to make sure you right click, which I just did right there, on the uh, on the decoupler attaching the uh, orbiter to the orange tank. And you want to make sure cross feed is enabled. Uh, that means that the fuel from the orange tank can actually flow into the space shuttle, um, and you don't need a fuel liner. If you don't do that, your space shuttle will not be going very far because uh, your engines will not be burning the orange tank fuel. So now I'm just setting up my staging and then um, the last thing we have to do to finish up the space shuttle before we can get a launch actually there's one more thing after this but uh, we need to make sure the uh, vector engines are pointed properly so if you want to turn on your center of mass and center of thrust which is that purple one you want the center of thrust to be pointing through the center of mass and that's what you want to rotate your engines to I rotated mine not quite enough at launch because you have to remember um, I'm doing a test kind of right here um, the SRBs will detach and that orange tank will uh, burn fuel and you can see my center of mass as I reduce a little bit of fuel out of the orange tank and after I bring the Clydesdales, the center of mass actually moves to the right and down a little bit. So you don't, add, so you want to, you want to have the engine slightly under rotated um, for uh, for the launch because then when you uh, uh, you the, the thing will still be controllable after you've decoupled the uh, Clydesdales. And, uh, you know, you've burned fuel out of the orange tank. So, yeah, that is basically the whole shuttle complete. Um, uh, last thing we need to do is uh, do action groups. And we need to set up um, our launch clamps. You need launch clamps, obviously, for a space shuttle. Because, um, I don't know if you've seen the shape of it. It will just fall over um, on the on the launch pad. It is not a very, it doesn't have a very sturdy base to it. Because it's not a building. It's a rocket, right? So, we just, you need a lot of, uh, um, uh, a lot of the uh, launch clamps and make sure um, which you'll see after I do a crossfade here uh, you want to make sure the launch clamps on the back side of the uh, ship so on the side that I'm doing right now are not very high up because if they're mounted fairly high on the vehicle what you'll end up doing is you'll end up just running into them when you try and do your launch and that will kind of flip you over and cause you to crash and rud and bad just generally bad stuff uh, yeah so that's what you want to do for your launch clamps and then our last thing is our action group so what I'm gonna set up an action group is to uh, deactivate the control surfaces um, because they're not actually activated during launch on the real thing and it looks kind of silly seeing the surface the you know the elevons kind of move around and uh, went on your launch and then you want action group 2 to activate I just did roll and pitch for the outer elevons and then just pitch for the inner elevons and then for the biggest tail fin obviously just yaw and that will make it so that you can actually turn your control surfaces back on with the click of a button when it is time to uh, turn your control surfaces on for landing. But that is the shuttle built, and now we can head out to the launch pad. Quick disclaimer, uh, quickly. I forgot to record the audio, um, f uh, the game audio, so you want to actually hear the engines burning. Um, that was my bad. I'll put some nice fancy background music on to kind of make it not standing. May you listen to my lovely voice, right? So you can see the control surfaces are moving right now. And then when we hit action group one, they are, oh, are we going to hit it? There we go. And now you can see as I move the pitch around, it is nothing is moving. So next thing we do, SAS on. Turn the vectors on full power and then Clydesdales and there we go decoupled and what you want to do is you want to pull up on the vectors right away to get the space shuttle you want it to pitch over a little bit uh, right after the launch and we get the time lapse going 
uh, just to keep it stable. Now, another thing to note, uh, this is kind of why I want to talk. To, one of the reasons I want to talk about the launch. This thing can get very difficult to control, especially if you don't have uh, your vectors um, angled correctly. So what you uh, want to do is you want to, you probably want to do a little bit steeper of an ascent to try and get out of the uh, lower atmosphere as, you, as quickly as possible, because that's where it's hardest to control. Another thing is this thing has a really high thrust to weight ratio when you uh, start to burn a lot of fuel out of the Clydesdales, so you probably might want to reduce the vector thrust. Um, you only want to do that once you're a little bit higher up, maybe above 10 kilometers, or else you won't have enough thrust to kind of actually properly control the vehicle. So here are coming to SRB separation, there they go, and then I'm uh, firing the vectors uh, back up to full power. And then if you did a slightly steeper ascent profile, you want to do a not steep ascent profile because you are going to get, you know, straight out of the atmosphere um, uh, if you do that. Um, so we're trying to get as much horizontal speed as possible because um, uh, the real space shuttle, I'm going to be flying this flight, flight, flight profile uh, rather, you know, accurately. So what they would do is once they would uh, uh, get their APWAP set, um, which is happening right now, they would cut the engine, then rotate over, and then they would decouple the orange tank. And then they would use the OMS engines to do the last few hundred meters a second of burning to get you into orbit. And you want to be careful because, you know, if you have a too steep of ascent profile and you're actually you're following the correct flight, the space shuttle profile, you're not going to have enough fuel in the OMS because uh, in my design, you only have about 570 meters a second with them in total. Um, you can obviously do your own design. But uh, yeah, that is us in orbit. And the last thing I want to do before the end of this video is do a little bit of a landing rundown. So we're on a suborbital trajectory now. I'm sorry if I'm going a little bit fast. Uh, I just want to keep this video nice and short for you guys. Um, we have action group two turned on. You want to make sure uh, if you don't, you could should put a fuel drain valve on yours. Uh, I forgot to do it. Um, but you want to have uh, as little fuel as possible. So I have all my fuel drained right now. So you want literally as little fuel as possible because the less fuel you have in the space shuttle, the further up the center of mass is, which means uh, the thing is more stable or uh, yeah, more stable. Um, uh, so I do want to talk about a strategy I use to re-enter the space shuttle because even when you have your center of mass as far forward as possible, it can still get very unstable. Um, so what I like to do is what you can see I'm doing right now is I like to come in, I like to um, have a trajectory that overshoots my de uh, destination, which in this case is the KSC. And then I like to uh, just kind of induce a spin or a flat spin or like an out of control-ish thing um, high up in the atmosphere. So, and then you kind of like just kind of just stop just because when you do your, your flip over maneuver or your, your spin, it puts a lot of drag into the airstream. What that causes you to do is basically just to stop right over top of your destination. Then you can kind of like do a little bit of a dive bomb and uh, land uh, at where you want to go. So that's the strategy I'm using and see I'm coming down for the runway. Um, you want to be careful not to kind of stall it like I did right there. Um, once you get below about 10-ish kilometers, the thing the thing becomes very stable. So you don't worry if you're like in a flat spin because you will it'll be it'll uh, like basically self recover itself. But now I'm coming down with the landing gear, coming over the runway, and we're just going to do a nice little landing here uh, with uh, with our little space shell. It's actually very controllable, which means uh, landing is pretty easy in the air. Ooh. There we go. Welcome back to the Kerbal Space Center. And we're on the runway. Hey, we, we did it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you found it uh, useful. Um, uh, sorry if you didn't. This is only my second tutorial, so um, let me know if there's anything I can improve. I'm trying to, you know, get better at these. My first one, the audio quality was even was pretty bad. Um, that, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. So um, as we uh, as we come as we come to a come to a nice little stop here on KSC Runway. Don't know why I went into like a Russian accent for a second there. Okay, guys. I like uh, that. Yeah, that's the end of the video. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time, please write a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. Until next time, and bye.